We're honored to be joined by State Senate um, Republican leader, the minority leader as we speak right now. Um, he is Steve Orho. And Senator, thank you so much for joining us. You're joining us on another, joining us on another segment. But I want to talk to you about big picture po politics in the Republican Party. Um, we have Chris Christie that we're going to be interviewing, just came out with a new book. This will be dated. It won't be so new at the time. And he said the Republican Party can't look back to 2020. It's got to look ahead. He never talks about Donald Trump about by, uh, by name when he says that, but he talks about stop talking about 2020. Let's talk about Biden and the Democrats and what they're doing in Washington. And that's our ticket to success, you say? I do, listen, I do believe in completely, you know, looking forward is a ticket to success. Uh, when Republicans had some of their best years under Ronald Reagan, and what he did is he gave everybody, you know, the feeling of, um, you know, that they could do exceptionally well, uh, the new day in, in, in America. And I do think that, you know, that kind of people want to have, the, you know, an optimistic outlook. People don't like to be pessimistic or anything like that. And they also, I think people like us to be classy Republicans, classy Democrats. And I don't think they necessarily like all the, um, you know, fighting that they see on TV and whatnot. And, and believe it or not, I, I do think that most of us, a wide majority of us in elected uh, office in Trenton, we are very, you know, collegial. We, 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 we disagree, but we disagree, you know, professionally. And I think it's incumbent upon our Republicans to talk about the ideas of, you know, personal in, individual responsibility, personal freedoms, and the idea of, listen, I've been talking about the finance issues of bringing capital into New Jersey yeah. because we lost our competitive, you know, um, position. And New Jersey used to be yeah. very, very competitive. Hey, Steve, let me ask you this. I don't think we've known each other a long time. I apologize for being so informal. Uh, That's Senator. okay. No, um, call me but, Steve. But, but Steve, let me ask you something. Every time I've interviewed you, you're always... And again, classy would be a word uh, I'll editorialize on my end. Classy, dignified, respectful, courteous. And you know, it doesn't seem to matter to you whether someone agrees or disagrees with you. But here's the question I'm going to ask. There are members of Congress that have actually threatened violence against other members of Congress who have put out names. I'll give you an example. Chris Smith, a Republican, a conservative Republican, been in Congress for how many years? God knows how many years, decades. He happened to vote for the infrastructure bill that Joe Biden uh, put out because he thought it was good for the district. He thought Chris Smith thought it would be good for his district. And there were some Republicans like Marguerite, Margaret Taylor Smith, uh, I got her name wrong, Margaret Taylor Greene, I'm sorry, who put out his name with 13 other Republicans who said he's a traitor. That's the opposite of everything you've been about. How the yeah. heck do we tone that down, Senator? Uh, Stephen, we have to tone it down by, by hopefully presenting the example of what we should be. And I'll go back to what my mom, I think if I ever say anything like that, my 89-year-old my, my mother would be on the phone saying, Stephen, behave yourself. And I'll go right back to, to that and say, hey, listen, if, you know, she said many, many times to me, Steve, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say it. You know, and, and, be, and the idea of, hey, I try to, I try to live my life as a Christian, um, you know, somebody goes to church all the time by, by two main rules, love your God and love your neighbor. And if you, if, you, if you do those things, quite frankly, everything else will take care of itself. And that doesn't mean I'm always going to agree with people, but how you do it matters. Why, I'm sorry, Senator, why are, we making, why are we making those who disagree with us the devil, our enemy? We, we should not. But, we but we're doing it so much, and how the heck do we begin to turn that around? You know, in, you know, Steve, by the example of, of, of other, and I would have to say that that is not, unfortunately, that's what gets played out in, in the media. Are, are we a part in, of it, Steve? Are, do we I contribute just, to it? In, in some ways, I would have to say yes, because that's, sometimes that's the, you know, what the audience, you know, kind of finds interesting they talk about. Unfortunately, you know, to, to talk about things that get done and are nice and, you know, people being nice to each other doesn't necessarily, so you see- Or in, even in respectful, every... respectful to, and by the way, in public television, yeah. I appreciate what the Senator said, but we're not into all that heat. But at the yeah. same time, um, we have people I don't disagree all the time. They're just respectful to each other as if that's some novel idea. You've but been you doing know, it Steve... for 30, 40 years, Senator. 
exactly. But you know, Steve, that's the that's the wide majority of people. It's not. It, it, I'd say the minority, the, the the small minority of people on on either side, can, you know, can can be that way. But for the most part, for the most part, I haven't witnessed those kind of things. And and I would say that kind of stuff should stop. It should. You stop. know, in, in New Jersey State House, so people understand. It's got a few seconds left. It's one thing in Congress. It's one thing about January sixth. That is not the tone and the tenor in the state house in New Jersey. You're you're crystal clear on that. Not at all. I would say when I go down to a meeting, we we I, I I make it a point to go around and say hello to all my colleagues, the staff, and the people in, in the audience and stuff. And I when very I have never seen anything like that down down in Trenton. Um, and quite frankly, it, it it should stop. We should go. We, we should be. You know, on all sides, we should be respectful. That's what we're elected to be. Yeah. That is uh, State Senator Steve Orojo. He is the uh, Republican leader in the state Senate, and we look forward to having him on in the future for civil spirited discourse um, where issues are talked about. Senator, all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Steve, very much. We appreciate it. I'm Steve Adubato. More importantly, that is State Senator Steve Orojo. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by MD Advantage Insurance Company, RWJ Barnabas Health, Wells Fargo, Community Food Bank of New Jersey, Johnson & Johnson, Suez North America, the New Jersey Education Association, the Russell Berry Foundation, and by the Adler Aphasia Center. Promotional support provided by the New Jersey Business and Industry Association and by NorthJersey.com and Local IQ, part of the USA Today Network. I'm very grateful that I'm still here. That's me and my daughter when we went to celebrate our first anniversary. With a new kidney, I have strength. They gave me a new lease on life. I'm still going everywhere and exploring new places. Nobody thought I was going to be here. Nobody. And I look forward to getting older with my wife. That's possible now. We're transforming lives through innovative kidney treatments, living donor programs, and world-renowned care at two of New Jersey's premier hospitals. They gave me my normal life back. It's a blessing. RWJ Barnabas Health. Let's be healthy together.